1970s, hitchhiking was kind of common in the United States. And I hitchhiked from the time I was about 15 to 25. Something that always amazed me about hitchhiking were the stories, the secrets really, that men would tell a hitchhiker. The best example of that was the time I hitchhiked from Miami to Phoenix. So this is my story. I was 25 years old, it's 1980. I had been traveling in Latin America for a couple of months and kind of, sort of, ran out of money in Peru. <laughs> the, the cheapest way to get back to the United States was to fly to Miami. So I figured, okay, I'll just hitchhike from Miami to Phoenix. So I get off the plane in Miami, completely exhausted, walk out to the freeway and start hitchhiking. The second ride I got that day was from a guy, he's in his early 50s, he's driving in a regular van, but it turns out he's an 18-wheel truck driver by trade. He's headed home to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Really nice guy. It's a pretty standard ride until about three hours in, he starts talking about how he met his current wife. So years earlier, after he got divorced from his first wife, he started hanging out at the local Dairy Queen a lot to eat and became friends with the kids who worked there. And he ended up dating a girl 20 years younger and they eventually get married. So I get the whole play-by-play, -play. it's a real cute story. And, but then, after driving along in silence for a really long time, totally surprises me, comes back to it very subdued and says that he had found out that his wife had cheated on him. It's like, wow, I did not see that coming at all. <laughs> Guys never talk about this stuff ever. So then there's more driving, more silence, and then he says, actually, she recently moved out. More driving, more silence, and the truck driver, he's almost tearing up, and he says, I forgive her. I just want her back. Wow! <laughs> the rest of the ride was pretty subdued. <laughs> so, a couple of rides later, it starts raining, and I ended up spending the night underneath the freeway overpass. I was unbelievably exhausted. The next day, I get picked up outside Pensacola by a guy in an economy station wagon. He's only in his early 40s. And when I tell him I'm from Phoenix, he says, oh, really? I used to live in Scottsdale. So he goes on and on about this house he bought in Scottsdale in the 1960s. You go up 68th Street, north of Camelback, and you cut into the neighborhood. You tell he was really proud of this house. So he, uh, he go, it turns out that he got a really good job at Air Research right out of college, and so did his best friend. And his best friend also bought a house in the same neighborhood. So they're both married, they're, they do everything together, they're living the dream. I think the story's over. The guy's driving along his house for a really long time, and he comes back to it, totally surprised me, and says, I know this is a cliche, but one day I came home from work early, and found my wife with my best friend. I go, wow, I did not see that coming at all. What's with this trip? So, and he said, when I walked out the front door that day, I never went back to that house. And he said, in fact, he never went back to work either because his best friend worked in the same place. The guy pretty much just ran away and ended up in Alabama. So, my, my, my big question has always been, why were these guys telling me such personal and painful stories? This is what I think happened. One, I was incredibly safe to talk to. I was headed 2,000 miles away. There was no way I could use their secrets against them. Two, the rides were really long. So they would slowly open up over hours. And three, and I think this is really the key, was the silence. I was so exhausted, I could barely function. I was barely talking at all. I think the silence was the key because both guys came back to their stories at much deeper levels after driving along in silence for a while. Whatever the reasons, I felt honored that they told me their secrets. I hope I helped them. And thanks for the ride, guys. I really appreciate it.